G'day, and welcome to this episode from Range Woodworking, where today we'll be embarking upon the classic woodworking rite of passage. That's right, chopping boards. We'll start off making a simple but professional looking edge grain chopping board after raiding the timber bin. You'll notice on the long walk from my timber storage, my pieces organise themselves neatly in my arms. And here I lay out my pieces to make sure I have enough to make the board in the dimensions I want. In this case, the finished board will be about 250 by 400 by 30 millimetres. And for the Imperial users, that's about 10 inches by 16 inches by an inch and a quarter-ish. First job is to prepare the timber pieces. So I rip the tongue and grooves off the jarra, cut the Tasmanian oak into pieces the right size, before removing all the paint and varnishes, and then finishing up on the thicknesser, to make sure the pieces are a nice uniform thickness. And there's a rough picture of the chopping board. Looking good already. Time to glue and clamp this up. Looks like I'm going all out and using my finger to spread the glue around for a change. I'm making sure I use a waterproof glue on these. Whilst wooden chopping boards shouldn't be washed in the sink, they inevitably will be. So I'm also making sure that the glue is thoroughly spread all over each face because anywhere without glue is somewhere that something else such as water or bacteria can get into. And once the glue is dry, I magic the panel out of the clamps, remove as much glue squeeze out as possible, and then send it through the thicknesser, taking shallow passes until nice and smooth. Okay, let's wrestle my crosscut sled out whip a small square out of somewhere to ensure my blade is 90 degrees and then trim each end until nice and tidy. Now I'm having a close look at each side of this to decide which I want as the top and the bottom before using my high-tech measuring hand to determine how wide to make the groove on the edges to make it easier to pick the board up. It is solid hardwood after all. To make the groove I'll use this 45 degree chamfer bit which will just roll along the edge like this. Now try take shallow cuts with this and don't stay in one spot for too long because trust me, sanding burn marks out of end grain is a real pain. And with a dramatic dismount, you can now see the grooves in action. Time for that painful sanding I mentioned. As per usual, I work up through the grits from 80 grit uh, all the way up to 240 grit, being sure to gently break the edges over also. Now as I'm sanding the edges, I probably should have gone up and down to match the grain direction of the board, but it's really not the end of the world as it gets tidied up by the subsequent grits. 
I give it a good soak of mineral oil, which lets us see the nice finished timber colors. Then I'll wipe off any excess oil. And massage in my beeswax mineral oil blend to offer a small amount of protection. And then once this is buffed, this board is finished. Easy as that. Now, let's rewind back to the start of the video and see what's different for an end grain board. Once again, I carry a neat stack of timber over to plan my panel. And once again, I tidy up the pieces until ready to glue up into a panel. End grain boards tend to require a bit more timber than their edge grain counterparts because the board thickness isn't limited by your available timber. It just requires a bit of maths and planning ahead. Now I want a board approximately 400 long and this panel is 30 mil thick. Seeing as that is the thickness of each row in my board, I divide 400 by 30 to see that I need 13.33 rows. Let's call it 14. Now I want my board to be 35 mil thick. So 14 times 35 is 490. When we add the saw curve, it becomes 532. Essentially, I now know that if I make my panel 540 mil long, I'll have enough timber to make my board exactly how I want it. Now that I've bored you to death with some maths and the panel's out of the clamps, it gets tidied up in the thicknesser again and one end squared off. Here I take my perfectly good board and cut it up into 35mm strips that will become the final board thickness. Now I'm making a few boards at once here so I have leftovers but you can see once all those cut pieces are turned on their side you have an end grain board. I alternate the orientation of every piece to try and make the grain pattern a bit more interesting. If I had an even number of rows in my panel, this would also create that classic chessboard style pattern. And with a click of my fingers, we're all glued up. Once the initial glue had set up, I added a sacrificial piece of plywood to the front and back also. Time to take my paint scraper and remove all that squeeze out, which I find really satisfying. Now, the sacrificial plywood was because I'm going to tidy these up in my thicknesser, which can be dangerous. However, I'm taking half a mil off at a time with my incredible helical cutter head. If you have a straight knife planer, I would probably use a belt sander for this bit. After that, I tidy the edges up at the table saw and cut off those sacrificial ends. Because the grooves are deeper on these boards, I'm using a bigger chamfer bit in my router table. I've marked my incredibly expensive router fence with start and stop lines and again creep up on my final depth. And it's time to sand again. In this case, sanding is pretty much exactly the same. I just spent longer with each grit on the end grain to make sure the boards are perfectly smooth. I quickly whip the laser out to brand the underside of the boards before spraying each face with water and letting it dry.
This causes the grain of the board to swell and stand up, which you can hear here, before I knock it off with my final sandpaper grit. This stops the board feeling furry after the first time it gets wet. Now I give the board an absolute dousing with mineral oil. You'll be astonished at how much oil this end grain drinks in. Again, I wipe away any excess before finishing with this Gillies Food Safe Wax this time. This is just another beeswax based wax blend that I had laying around. I give it a good massage into all the nooks and crannies before giving it a hypersonic buff to get it into the pores. And with that, this board is finished too. Time for a side by side comparison. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider liking and subscribing. And let me know which board you prefer in the comments below. Until next time, take it easy.